welcome to God Encounters. We're so glad you've joined us today. Today my guest is John Mark Poole. John Mark is a prophet to the nations and has a ministry called Word to the World Ministries. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be with you, Cheryl. Finally. You. Yeah. <laughs> You're a busy you guy. <laughs> well, yeah, we all are. But it's good that we have this time. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. And I just love your wife, Sandy. Oh, yeah. She's so precious. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And we love you. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank God for what you're doing. Thank you. Now, you have authored a couple of books that I wanted to share today. The first one is The Path of a Prophet. Mm -hmm. and uh, has some exciting stuff in here you're going to share with us about uh, in a little some bit. Some of it. And uh, the other one is Love, God's Greatest Gift. Yeah. And I love the lion. Mm. He's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so even a story behind the cover. <laughs> oh, I bet there is. Yeah. So for those of um, the listening audience that don't know who you are, can you share a little bit of, that, of your background for us? Well, um, God had called me, you know, like uh, Jeremiah said, I knew you before you were born as a prophet of the nation. So that's sort of how I was born, I just knowing stuff. My mother told me at the age of three, I uh, could barely speak, and I told her, Andy, thank you from Oklahoma is coming. And she said, what? And she said, I started getting everything ready. So. Uh, she said, I asked her how long this gift had always operated. She said, since you could talk. Wow. And so I got the whole house ready, and about 3 o'clock that afternoon, they knocked on the door, just surprise visit. Wow. And she said, you couldn't have known a thing because you didn't even know who they were. Wow. So from that forward on, there was a lot of ups and downs. Uh, you get uh, prepared through the crucible of fires and afflictions, but through <laughs> all of that, um, I would say in the ministry, when I started itinerant ministry more, of getting out and traveling at that period of time. Uh, the prophetic move had just begun really taking effect across the U.S. through people like, I'd say the father of prophetic move, like Dr. Bill Hammond back in the 80s. Mm. And as I traveled, I began to, I was a traveling evangelist then. So I would go to churches and the pastor would have me pray for people. And he'd say, well, you didn't, I didn't know you were a prophet. And I'm going like, I didn't either. <laughs> he said, well, you just prophesied to like 200 people. And so I didn't know what this was. So it was wow. very interesting. So. Then through various Stop things. Stop for a second. Okay. I want you to explain. <laughs> so some people will just say a sweet prayer over somebody. Obviously, you had specific, I would call, words of knowledge and things that normal people wouldn't know to pray over people. Would you say that's accurate? Yes, and then you learn about the prophetic gift. Uh, God said that uh, that's the one gift out of all of them that he gives that he would have us covet or desire earnestly. Right. And so also knowing the Word of God, and some people watching may not, but I just want to read this scripture from the Old Testament. It yeah. says, Amos 3, 7, Indeed, the sovereign Lord never does anything until he reveals his plans to his servants, the prophets. Right. So God has channels and plans, and it included prophetic ministry. And a lot of people are not un, you know, familiar with that through their training or not training. And so as I grew through this, I just kind of stumbled along in it, not knowing because there weren't schools of prophets then. Right. So as I began to grow in that and uh, see this thing happen, I would, uh, God directed me to some uh, very seasoned, long-term prophetic me messengers like Chuck Pierce and uh, different ones. I got connected with Steve Schultz at the Elijah List and then uh, uh, an apostle by the name of, uh, you know, Dutch Sheets and uh, Lance Wall now, uh, Sid Roth, we went to Israel together. Oh, wow. Different things like that. As you get into those streams, you begin to learn yes. on the journey quickly yes. because they have so much to offer. Yeah. And you begin to realize you're not crazy. That's what these people do. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, there's just so many facets to it that it never gets old. Right. Well, yeah. God's multifaceted. Oh, very. <laughs> very. And it's yeah. one of many gifts. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Big yeah. picture is the whole okay. picture. Fun. Yeah. How long have you been in ministry? I would say it's grown on 40 years, believe it or not, wow. off and on, you know, okay. <laughs> but totally surrendered it. I f preached my first message at 16. So oh, wow. I'm 60-ish. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so you don't have to tell me. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how would you say God speaks to you most? Well, Cheryl, I would say that um, uh, when Sid Roth hosted me, I told him the same words. It's just the way it is. It's, I see sort of like a ticker tape 
of a little word or two or something or an occurrence in their life or just a blurb or sometimes just a little little uh, like a film just like a quick snippet okay. of, a, of a movie like yeah. a trailer and then I get a heads up on that and if I start going with that then the rest of it just starts flowing. It's like a, a Holy Spirit flow. Okay. And the, the so you step out in faith. You will see something, mm -hmm. and then you just lean into right. the Lord, mm -hmm. and you just keep giving the word. Okay. And the more you do that, like whoever operates in the gifts of faith, you know, who pray for healing. Uh, I talked to a man. It's his gifting is the super gift of, I call it the great gift of faith. He, he prays for people. He never thinks of them not being healed. Mm. So he operates in that so much. It's like in the prophetic, it's like a muscle. The more you use it, yeah. the easier it is. So it's still an act of faith on some areas. Uh, some of the assignments, like they threw me into uh, the Senate's people, was with a group of senators and had a private meeting with the Northern Iraqi delegation during the war. And uh, they were all Muslims. And, and the senator goes, uh, you're a prophet. I want you to prophesy to these people from the government since that's what we're doing here right. and uh, we're senators who are Christians so give them a word I'm going like you are kidding me <laughs> and I asked God I said what do you tell Muslims he said they're humans yeah just like everybody else they have yeah. souls just like everybody else right and he said they understand prophetic because the guy they follow they call prophets so oh wow so they really received the word it blew my mind away mm. but there's so many different types of settings and when you've been through so many different doors and then it's sort of like exciting because another door can open and then all of a sudden you're there and it's, <laughs> it's, probably, it's do it time. So that was an act of faith where I just had to really try a new one. And so I just opened my mouth and when God filled it. And yeah. the next thing you know, they're crying. These mm -hmm. big, great leaders of the nation are crying. And they all said that uh, we know this is a man of God because nobody but our God and us knew what he just shared with us. So that's the exciting part is that it lifts, you know. Uh, like Daniel in the Bible. In Revelation 19, <laughs> 10, it said, worship Jesus for, you know, for Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Yes. So when you lift up the Lord, yes. and I admonish everybody, when you lift up the Lord, you're not worshiping a gift. I don't hone in to make my gift extremely accurate. I depend on the Holy Spirit because I don't worship a gift. I worship the giver of the gifts. Right, amen. You know what I'm saying? Yes, that's good. So, yeah. You're humans and there can be error, but God's grace is sufficient. Yes. That's what I like about it. Amen. It's, it's, yeah. So you experienced a God encounter in that book you wrote. Many of them, but <laughs> one that really stands out the most. Yeah, I'd like you to share that. Um, you know, <laughs> in here, it's interesting. Um, Oh, it, it's called A Time to Die in that chapter. Mm. But I do want to read one real small word that part of the preface from James Gall, my friend who forwarded this book, mm -hmm. he said, uh, I wish it were instant, but it's not instant. There are no shortcuts to becoming a prophet. Gifts are given, but the character to carry the gift is forged in the fires of affliction. Yes. And believe me, we know. Yes. So that being said, <laughs> the fires of affliction that can happen are things like... Uh, uh, becoming dead to this world, literally. <laughs> yeah. And so I was going through some really stressful seasons at that time. I was living for God, but I wasn't obeying his uh, direct call to be a voice of the nations. And um, I can remember uh, in business as I was building a medical company, uh, I remember how stressful it was because as we added more business, there was always more competition. It was just a really a stressful position. And we were doing great, but the ownership of the company, um, part of them were in the demonic realm. Mm. And so um, I found out that that was mostly the stress I felt because uh, no matter how successful we got, they were never happy. And so there's no peace in, in mm. without God. Mm -hmm. And so it, it starts out this chapter says, dying was not on my schedule. Well, that day I had a large display for a large uh, medical show in a big coliseum and we were front and center because I organized it. And I realized uh, when, you know, the part of the ownership came in, uh, they started snapping a whip sort of at me like, mm. and not, not applauding me like this is a great thing to have. Right. And so I just felt that pressure. And then I was supposed to uh, 
put a few ads in the newspaper for some employee, you know, a request for employment. We're always needing more employees. So I just chose that as a moment in time to exit and let them do their thing and come back that afternoon. The show's going to last for two or three days. So I drove over to uh, the newspaper where I did a lot of business. And uh, the lady, she looked at me and she, she I gave me some prices on the ads. And I said, wow, I am sick. And she says, no, I gave you the best prices. And I said, no, no, no. I mean, she said, you don't look good. I said, I feel mm. horrible. Mm. And she said, lay your head on the desk. We'll get a cold towel, a glass of water. We'll and about that time, I laid my head on it, everything started spinning. I just fell on the floor. Wow. And I didn't realize at the time, I was experiencing what they call a pulmonary embolism or a blood clot to my lung. And so they didn't know what's happening. The next thing, I kind of would come and go. And then I uh, felt the lifting sensation of going into the ambulance. Mm. I saw my sister briefly, and then I went to ICU. Wow. And, uh, you know, it, and it was just intense, and they were doing everything they could. And I saw my, I just kind of came phased in and out. I looked up, and there was my dad, mother, and everybody standing around me, and they were sincere looking very. Yeah. And I said, wow, this must be serious. And so I looked at dad, and I went, well, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm leaving. Mm. He said, you're not going to be a resident of heaven before me. You got too much to do, son. I said, well, bye. And I just went blink. Mm. And uh, it was like a white screen, like you hear. Just immediately I sat up in the bed next to me and it was it was my spirit, but it's more real than being in your body. Mm. And so I saw everybody and I said, hey, you know, you did it. And they're going crazy trying to get me back alive. You right. know? So I said, I don't know, why are y'all going crazy? I feel better, I mean, what you did worked. And so I started going up. I said, well, if you're not gonna listen, so I'll just take off. So I started going up in the room and I'll, if you hear a lot of death, death experiences and you can see people, what's weird, Cheryl's, I looked at my body and there was no face on it. It was just blank. Oh, weird. You know, the huh. you is the spirit. Hmm. That's just a tent or covering. Right, so the right. real you, so I, I got up and started, I started going, um, through the clouds the next thing you know i went through stratas of heaven next thing you know i went through um a war in the heavenlies in the second heaven and all these mm. ghoulish demonic beings were fighting all these heavenly angelic forces mm. and i thought i missed heaven i kind of curled up in a fetal position and then all of a sudden i burst through that mm. and it was like riding on a helicopter looking through the rocky mountains or the swiss alps or something you know and i love mountains and i thought well this is so nice of god to give me a tour <laughs> of the mountains <laughs> <laughs> I said, wow. And the next thing you know, I said, you know, their mountains were getting so close. I said, and whoever's steering this, if they don't get right between those two mountains, we're gonna hit one of them. And we got broke right over the mountains. And I looked as far as the eye could see, and I saw domes, golden domes, like Eastern Orthodox, and they had slits of windows. And as far as you could see, they just went, like mm. seeing on a cruise, you know, where you mm. see the mm -hmm. ocean. Mm -hmm. As far as the naked eye could see, and they were like brilliant 24 karat gold and the light was more gold and brilliant that was coming out of them. Wow. And there were like billions of them. And so about that time, my ride dropped me down in this big door and I looked up and it was like maybe 50 foot tall, you know, 50 foot wide, three or four foot thick, it was wide open. And I just saw these beautiful shimmering golden streets. Mm. And I thought, wow, you know, I just gotta go in there. You're just compelled Drawn, right. so I went in wow. and I looked down I said gold streets and reached up and I rubbed the door and it was mother of pearl all one piece and that's biblical and I said pearly gates golden streets I said I'm in heaven and so I walked mm. up you know the streets of gold and started seeing things where mm. I could go on all day but one thing that was important was it was not my time to reside there and God wanted to have a visit with me and so you know when you're around somebody long enough like your husband walks in and you're making coffee in the morning you can feel them you know, that's how you are only more intense. I felt somebody walk up and I turned around. I looked at the brother that uh, had passed away before I met him, mm. you know, a child, mm -hmm. uh, he, he died. Hmm. And I looked and mother told me about his name once or twice, I'd never seen a picture of him. I looked at him, I said, Stanley. Wow. I said, Stanley, mm. he said, yes, John Mark, I'm the brother you've never met. And he wow. came over and gave me a big hug. He said, oh welcome to heaven. He said these words, welcome to heaven for you are here. Wow. Oh, no. It was like, wow, that's a wow you. So it was like, well, man, I got to go. And he said, you want to go thank Jesus because you don't feel that 
I mean, you feel so, that's how you feel. You're like, I don't deserve this. Mm. That's how you feel mm. in your spirit. Mm -hmm. And so he said, but you can't right now because you're not going to reside here right now. I went, oh, are we going to get a tour? He said, well, there's some things that uh, the Lord wants you to hear. And you're pretty busy and strong-willed. And so we th he thinks this visit might help you. Wow. I went, uh oh <laughs> He goes, yeah, didn't the Lord name you audibly while our mother was carrying you, saying his name will be John Mark and he'll be a voice to the nations. I went, dude, you guys know stuff. He said, oh, that's, that's that much. Wow. He said, oh, the tape's still running. He said, I said, yeah, he, he did. He said, and? Mm. I went, well, I mean, I'm a, I was going to explain being a prophet to the uh, medical center and all that. And I said, this is heaven. I can't, st that's a lie. <laughs> God didn't authorize that. I just said he did. And so you're so pure of heart, you I just hung my head and said, he did. And he goes, well, let me encourage you. The Lord wants you to know that he's very serious about the gifts and callings he puts on every person, which is not to mean the prophet in the marketplace is less important than you. Right. You just got to do what you're supposed to do right. and let them do what they're supposed to do. Yeah. Wow. And he said, and I know you're going to do that hmm. because you're going to make our mother and our father here, mm. very pleased. Mm. I said, wow, I feel like I just need to be shifting into that as soon as I can, you know? He goes, you will. And the other thing the Lord wanted you to know, and he wants you to tell the, the nations, especially our country, uh, America, mm -hmm. that God wants all the Christians to come into the unity mm. of the power of agreement and faith mm. and not argue about everything, come into the uh, mm. prayer of agreement because that will break the stronghold of the enemy down because he uses that against the Lord if we don't use agreement. So you don't find a lot of unity, but we re really need to press that way, the power of, uh, of agreement and prayer. Really, he said the power of, of agreement and prayer is what breaks the yoke of the enemy, not your fighting flesh and blood okay. and so forth. Okay. And you've got to carry that message back. That we, What can we agree upon? Jesus Christ, dead, buried, and resurrected. Yep. We don't have to agree upon anything right, else. Right. That makes them a brother and a sister, mm -hmm. and we can go pray with all kinds of groups. Then mm -hmm. we bring them into the unity, and it will break the stronghold of the enemy that's against our nation. And it, he said, and it's going to bring the heart of the children back to the Father, mm -hmm. and that's going to be one of your missions. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm sure I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> well, you got to go. And I said, oh, what do I mean? What do you mean? He said, you have to go back. I said, uh, believe me. If you've never been to heaven, you don't want to hear the words, you got to go back. And so if I dropped off right now, don't pray me back unless Sandy <laughs> said, because I don't want to come back. But I'm telling you, it is like coming out of a prayer meeting or something, or when you feel the most blissful or the most, I don't know how to tell the listening audience, but we would say in a real high realm of the spirit where mm -hmm. you just are in tune with the Lord and the Holy Spirit so much, you never want to come out of that. Yeah, in the glory. It's in the glory. Mm -hmm. And it's like that times a million. And so I said, mm -hmm. okay, before I go, let me ask you a question. He goes, okay, hurry up because it's getting time. He'd look over to the throne mm -hmm. and he goes, um, what is it? And I said, well, all of those, all of those um, domes and all of those uh, cities all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, they go just forever. I mean, is it like, how big is, it? I mean, it's like, he said, as far as you can think that way, you can think that way, this way, and this way. I said, well, that's different from what I read. He said, it's just a model in the Bible. He said, God's ever increasing. Well, mm -hmm. I said, well, what are these cities about? He said, brother, you're not going to be able to handle this. They're not cities. They're mansions. It's impacted my whole future. How long were you in the hospital after that? I was there for about a week and a half. I went from ICU to MICU. They wanted to make sure there was no other clots that would, you know, they were mm -hmm. monitoring it and putting, uh, you know, the things that catch clots and all kinds mm -hmm, of stuff and mm -hmm. monitoring just to, you know, I knew God had healed me and brought me back, but I also knew it was a time of, of spending time with him mm. during that period of time. And I had a, an angelic encounter when I got back into ICU, MICU. And um, I just looked up and there was a man in a suit and he kind of pinched me on the toe and he goes, how are you feeling, John Mark? I went, I feel good. And he goes, well, great. I've heard you had a trip to heaven. I went, I told nobody this yeah, trip. Right. He goes, yeah. Um, and uh, the Lord told you some things, didn't he? I said, oh, he did. He said, and about um, bringing us into power of agreement and prayer. Mm. I went, dude knows some stuff, doesn't he? <laughs> I thought maybe he's a pastor. I said, I think he may be past a pastor. <laughs> and he goes, um, 
and uh, you're going to keep your commitment to be a voice to the nations now, aren't you? I went, I really am. He said, well, just a word for you. You didn't just um, go there. The place where you've been has witchcraft involved, and they put a war death curse on you, and it works. So God thought this would be a great time just to bring him to heaven and mess up their plans. So you're going to be shifting into your calling pretty soon. So it may be a little rocky on your recovery, but it'll all work out. You just keep saying yes to the call. Wow. Wow, and man, did it ever. So the shift happened thereafter, and um, we separated from there, and I felt like a million pounds off my shoulders. And uh, then, one, you know, when you say yes to God on your journey, don't be afraid of that step of faith. One act, because see, I had all that coming from heaven, assuring me God was going to make this work. That was a beautiful part, so it didn't take as much faith. But the faith that came in, like, well, I got a family, I got to feed people, I got a mortgage, and you know, so all of that to a guy is tough. But I immediately got invited to go to a new church church startup, and the pastor came up to me and says, I hadn't seen you in years, John Mark. I need you to help me with this church. I'm going like, dude, you got the wrong man. I hadn't done any of this. And he goes, no, God told me you're it. Wow. You came at the right time. So it shifted. I got back immediately back mm. into ministry. Um, it's just, I can write a whole other book about that shift. Mm. But I know one thing. When you don't feel the peace and you're struggling to make doors open and you're not happy or you're not seeing results, or you're not, even money, we, we, we had plenty of money. We were making millions of dollars there. Yeah, wow. But there was absolutely zero peace and God was not pleased or, see, he won't bless you away from his assignment. You, you, you negate the blessings. That's good. Obedience. So I tell that you, really is was key. A, you have to be obedient. That was huge love from God to do all of that, to get me, you know, and I look back and think, what a blessing from Daddy God mm. to get that in personal with me because I was sort of like a Saul to a Paul in a sense to get me right back in. That's a lot of love, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So that was a, yeah. that was a real God encounter for my yeah, life. Yeah, definitely. And uh, it's still, when I recount it to you, it's like, the difference in a, actually being there, and then I subsequently went many times. I spent a day with Elijah, you know, out of my spirit and went to heaven. And it's just as real to you when you're there, but an encounter like that is different from a dream. And so dreams, you have to write them down and record them because they might get a little fuzzy. Mm -hmm. But this encounter, it was so real. Right. It was like, when I told you just now, it's like I just did it. Yeah. It never gets fuzzy. Wow. And I could talk about it for two more hours, but <laughs> I know you got a schedule. Oh, that's okay. Um, can you share anything about the Elijah when you... Oh, yeah. Wow. That was you know, amazing. he was one of my heroes. If you're a prophetic yeah, messenger, right. obviously, Elijah, Elisha, yeah. all of those would be a hero. Yes. <laughs> so I just said to God, Lord, I really want to meet Elijah, Elijah one day, if you oh. could ever see fit. <laughs> so I was ministering up in Pennsylvania, and I was um, at a church, and I got finished that evening. It was an evening service on a Sunday, and um, uh, not very many people left in the sanctuary, and the pastor who plays the piano, he's just softly over there playing and just relaxing before we had a little time of visitation. These ladies came over and said, now, man of God, can we pray for you? I said, sure. So they all circled around me. A little spirit-filled lady started praying for me, and, you know, speaking in their heavenly language and laid their hands on me. Next thing you know, I just went out like, bam. I hit the carpet much like this carpet. There wasn't a lot of foam under it. <laughs> but I didn't know it. I felt like I landed felt like I landed on clouds. And immediately I woke up from that and I was laying on my stomach looking at a little riser about this high. Mm -hmm. And uh, there sat a man on it looking down at me. And I just knew when I looked up, I said, I'm in front of Elijah. Wow. I just had that knowing. And he was just kind of smiling semi-smile. What do you look a, like? He had a real high forehead, which okay. tells you that the people that are really smart, they have the big <laughs> forehead, high forehead. It's kind of a square head, mm -hmm. and his hair was like all around the edges and bald across the top, mm -hmm. and his hair flowed real long and mm -hmm. just really, really good-looking mm -hmm. hair, really, you know, mm -hmm. white. And he had on, like, clothing that would have material on material, like white on white. Hmm. You know, real ornate scrolling oh, stuff wow. like you know, yeah. embroidery. Yeah, very much. Okay. And, wow. And I liked that embroidery work, and it was what it was shiny white, so you could see. Hmm. You know, it was very ornate. It was very uh, authoritarian looking, mm -hmm. like a man of authority mm -hmm. in the area. And I looked at him, and I, and I sat up, 
you know. And I looked him square in the eyes, and they were like steel blue eyes that just went right through you. Mm. And I went, I just knew that's who he was. And he kind of smiled. I said, you're Elijah. And he goes, I am. I heard you wanted to visit. Wow. I went, well, that word gets around, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I looked at him, and I said, um, wow. And he goes, uh, <clears throat> I said, where are we? He said, this is a prophetic record room in heaven. I said, so this is your department? He said, well, it's one of the areas. Like, I have a few more things <laughs> to do. Yeah. And he said, but this is a prophetic record room, and the Lord wanted it, mm. you to see it mm. as well as with me. And he said, uh, and I looked. In the beginning, I saw, like, papyrus papers. And it's a huge room, high, infinite ceilings. It was all, it was a huge room. And then it went to scrolls. You mm. know, it went to the ages. And then the binders and then more, you know, modern books and even those big legal bound books with the leather binders and cover. Yeah, yeah. And it got to that and there, he said, see that one on the floor? And I looked and went, wow, I didn't see that book. And it's like, it's like this thick. It's like this long. And it was like satin gold. Mm. You know, kind of a satiny, not shiny. But on the sides, he said, now in that shiny part, there's a name. What's that name? And this is John Mark Poole. And he said, that's your book. Wow. He said, pick that up and open it. Wow. And I picked it up. Now, I'm sitting right in front of Elijah. I picked it up and opened it. And I began to see the words. I began to start prophesying when I first started. Every one of them are in there. And I remembered every wow. one of them. And I'm going like, wow. He goes, that's, that's kind of fun. And I went, oh yeah. Gosh. He goes, Keep turning, so I, you know, and this book's like this thick. And I got to like there, and I turned it, and the pages were blank. I I'm going to stop you there okay. for just a second. Sure. Um, so we're going to continue on to part two with this. Um, so stay tuned.